is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to our man Jim in Palm Harbor. Hey, what's going on, brother? Hey, how you guys doing today? Doing great, man. How you been? Oh, great. I really appreciate you and Tommy. They, they do great job, great work, and I really appreciate it. I watch you every day. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you growling a problem with us out here, man. Let's go to uh, Sylvia in Tampa. Hey, Sylvia, how you doing? Hey, Tom. Good morning. Thank you so much for taking my call. I want to tell you thank you so much for the advice you gave me on dust yesterday. I exited when you told me, and I made a, I made a healthy profit for, That's awesome. for a very short period. So thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 177. Get the NASDAQ off 30. S&Ps are off 17. Percentage-wise, what we have out here, folks, is that you have the Dow Industrials off 7 tenths of 1 percent. S&Ps off 5 tenths. NASDAQ off 4 tenths. And that's nothing when we take a look at the actual uh, commodity market. Inside the commodity market, folks, light sweet crude uh, down 4.6 percent. You got wheat down 4 percent. Gasoline's down 3.7. Soybeans are off 2.6. Silver's down 1.5. Where's gold? Well, gold's down 11 bucks, but it's only nine, nine, nine tenths of one percent. Bottom line is that uh, you get this market taking a beating out here. Uh, light, uh, gold down 11 dollars and 40 cents, trading at 12.43. We got the uh, light sweet crude. Uh, we had the crude the API numbers coming out. Uh, came out today. You talk about price spread, monster price spread out here today inside the crude market. Uh, we had the uh, crude market trade up to a high um, today of 74.26, down to a low of $70.02. You get volume behind the move. You get fast moves. Bottom line, in uh, all of about uh, two hours, we just came back to May 8th. Yes, May 8th of where that light sweet crude is right now. Notes and bonds, bottom line. Now, this is where this is getting really wild. Notes and bonds continue to want higher price. The volatility in the note and bond market, well, in all the markets in general today, uh, has been extensive. Uh, if we go over and we take a look at the 10-year note first, what you're going to see with the 10-year note is that the 10-year note trading at a price point right now of 120.08. Uh, that baby had been up to a high of 120.13. It had pulled all the way back to 120.02. Bottom line comes right back topside. These babies, the 10-year note right now, wants to get up to this uh, swing high of 121.03. That's the swing high from the 30th of May. We've done 1.4 million contracts. That's, that's good contract volume, not huge, good contract volume. Bottom line, it wants higher price. We take a look at the 30-year bond, what you're going to see with the 30-year bond, same type of setup, monster move out here today. Uh, we got down a low in the 30 years, 145.03. You got to a high of 145.24. We're at 145.14. We have volume behind the move, and this baby is right next to that high volume swing high. Uh, we try to take that high volume swing high out last Wednesday. You got over the high. You had lighter volume. You closed under the high. Bottom line, it's going to go after it again, which is the 145.28. It's going to be a lot easier to take it out this time. Why? Because we did 235,000 contracts, and we're already at 237. So that baby is setting up to take that out. King Dollar. What did King Dollar do? King Dollar's been all over the place, but bottom line is that King Dollar is topside. King Dollar had a low out here today of 93,820. You're at 94,450. That being said, uh, the, the volume's not bad. Not great, but not bad. Uh, King Dollar right now has done 24,000 contracts. You're, at, you're going into 28,000 contracts. So King Dollar will need more contract volume. We're at 94,455. That is over the 94,155, which is the low of the 29th. That is saying that King Dollar does have a shot to get to the high 
one more time. Some of the higher volume equities out here, this is what we have. You have the Bank of America is down 10 cents, big volume though. Uh, My Bell is uh, down 53. We have American Airlines off 299. That's getting smoked. American Airlines is actually on an ABC structure on the way down. Um, uh, what you have here is that you're down three bucks, which is uh, nine percent. Uh, you talk about volume, man. It's just blowing away this uh, B point. The B point on, on American Airlines is thirty-six dollars seventy-six cents. Your A point is up there at forty-five. You get approximately eight dollars. That's going to bring American Airlines down to approximately the thirty-two dollar level. And we do take a look at it. What you're going to see, the thirty-two dollar level is laying out at one of the uh, where we came off the lows in July of 2016. Volume-wise out here, what we have, let's go take a look at the NYSE. NYSE right now is at $395 million. Now, what you're going to see here, we are going to get an expansion of volume. The way the market has been trading in the last few days is this. Yesterday, we did $726 million on the NYSE. The prior day, $761. That being said, we were at approximately... 400 um, at these levels. No, not at these levels, when I'm getting off the air. We're already at 400, 395 at 3 o'clock. Both prior days, we're at 435 at 5 minutes of 4. What you're going to see is that market on close, big numbers coming into the market, and that's what I expect we're going to see out here today. We go take a look at inside the Dow Industrials, the strength versus the weakness. This is what we have happening out here. Uh, strength inside the Dow Industrials. In fact, I don't think, we're, well, yeah, we do, do have strength. Okay, so strength inside the Dow Industrials. You have Disney putting 12 positive points. Visa putting 11. American Express putting four. Taken away from it, Boeing. Minus 40 points. Caterpillar minus 29. Chevron minus 26. Uh, if we take a look at Chevron, and what you're going to see, we've been talking quite a bit about this, the Oil stocks themselves, folks, bottom line, haven't been able to catch a bid when oil is at 75. They were indicating that oil is going to pull back. Pretty amazing, actually, looking at it. Uh, they've been indicating this for quite some time. Uh, bottom line is that, that we get the pullback happening. The real question is, is that how did oil get hit so dramatically? I mean, this baby, you talk about getting hit. This is like quite a hit. Um, it's one thing with the numbers coming out. The, the actual, if you're a fundamentalist, the numbers were actually bullish for the market because the drawdown was so dramatic. Bottom line, we know markets are deviant. They sold this baby down, and they sold it down in a big way. If you happen to be watching Tiger TV, what you're going to see here is that when the numbers actually come out at 10.30 this morning, oil gapped up to $74.04 because we had a large drawdown. It stayed there for, you know, basically a half hour, and then see ya. It just started a down track at 11 o'clock when Tommy and I got off the air and just didn't stop. The, the first acceleration slowed down at, the, at noon. It uh, traded sideways for about a half hour. And then at 1240, it just plunged. And it plunged from a price point of $72.37 down to the $70 area. Bottom line is that you have a high volume high with volume off the high, that's saying that oil wants to pull off. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! In 
quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow Industrials down 199. You get the NASDAQ off 35. S&Ps are off 19. Let's go over to that GDX. So uh, bottom line is that they take the gold contract south. They take the GDX south. Uh, bottom line, we're down to 61 cents right now, $21.98. Um, you're going against. Now, we're going against the strength that we had on the 29th of June. Uh, we have 31 million shares trading 53. Uh, the little problem child out here could be a, we'll find out at 4 o'clock, uh, what kind of a problem child we have. And the reason I'm saying that is this. What happens with the GDX is that the GDX gets a lot of volume in at the close. It particularly gets a lot of volume at the close when you have large moves higher and large moves lower. Because the trustee of the ETF, the GDX, is going to have to match out the net asset value as we come into this close. Um, the low of the strength is $21.93. We're $21.99 right now, so this volume characteristic is going to be a big one today, meaning that we don't want to see, if you're a bull, you don't want to see more than $53 million. Right now, we're at 31. I know that sounds like a lot, but uh, what the GDX is capable of uh, is capable of putting some big volume into the close. If we go over to the SLV, the SLV, of course, is the um, iShares Silver Trust that trades at 10% of the price of silver, uh, trades, trades the price of silver, basically. Uh, what that is doing, that's going right after its swing low from last week. The swing low last week was $14.84. We hit $14.85. Um, we're coming into that with volume. So we have 9 million versus 9.1 million. Uh, we haven't hit the low. We missed it by a penny. That's also a problem. If we go take a look at the silver contract, we take a look at that silver contract out here. The silver contract right now is trading at a price point of $15.83. That's down 25 cents. That, I believe, it's, if it didn't break it, it's right next to the low that was established last week. Let's see what we got here. So your low last week is $15.80. Look at that. Wow. It was, to be exact, it was $15.80. 0 0.800, the low of last week, you had 82,000 contracts. We hit 15.805, and you get 83,000 contracts. So your bearish part of that is that you get an expansion of volume as you come into the lows. We'll see how this uh, close uh, trades out. The um, If we go take a look at Royal Gold, which is 
one of the strongest gold stocks out there. It has been. Bottom line is that that's, that's not doing a thing to it, uh, which is really intriguing. So Royal Gold out here um, is down there at 98 cents. You get 300,000 shares traded, but the bottom line is that you're going into 461. Uh, if we look at Inico Eagle, uh, which has been another good performer out here, same deal. You're down, you're down a buck, but you're going into 128,000 car shares, and you only have 600,000. So um, this close is going to be important. Uh, particularly, it's going to be important how the good old king dollar is operating coming into this close. We go take a look at the NDX100. So NDX100 out here. Uh, that little baby got down into uh, 7220. Right now you're at 7248, uh, and this is kind of a classic, folks. And what I mean by a classic is this: is that you had a nice counter. counter well, you had first off, it goes up. Bottom line, you you break the highs that were established out here on the 13th of March. That high that was out there 13th of March is 175 dollars and 21 cents. The NDX100 as well as the Nasdaq led us higher. Made, broke topside, made a high on, on the 20th of June. Now, it came off that high with big volume. We tested yesterday, and we tested with 23 million. Today, what you're gonna see is that you're gonna be down with an expansion of volume. And this is pretty subtle, but the bottom line is that this is saying that you're gonna have a failure that's gonna be set up at the 175.21. Thus far, you really don't have a failure in price because you'd have to get under the breakout area, which is that 175.21. Your probability gets higher when this volume gets higher as we come into the close today, as long as that price stays down 86 cents, which it is right now. We go into the SPY. The SPY, bottom line, never made it back to its high. The SPY was 286.62. You know, we made it yesterday to 279. Now, what the SPY has done is this. The SPY absolutely has an uh, a increase in volume. It's going to be a big one because we've already done 51 million and the SPY, we did 51 million yesterday. That SPY is going to end up doing like 75 million shares. So bottom line is that what I do expect is that you're going to see more selling as we come into the close. The dynamics inside this market are pretty intense. And specifically what I mean by that is this. The market itself is not down. You know, we're dealing with larger numbers because we're at such large numbers. But percentage-wise, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow are not down as much as they actually could be. And the real question is going to be looking at the market tomorrow and the next day because Friday, earnings start. So looking at that market, is, that, is, is the, this the beginning of the train that's going south or is this it's a small pullback? in the context of where this market wants to go. So let's go over and take a look at the XLF because the XLF is gonna kick off earnings in a monster way on Friday. And what we did have on Monday is that you had a huge sign of strength at the bottom of the XLF's consolidation. You know, the, the XLF topped out in January at $30. They're at 27. Uh, last week we were at 26.31. And the XLF by itself as an ETF it moves very slow, actually. It's not like, uh, you know, it's not like the NDX, that's for sure. Bottom line, thus far, this is pulling back on light volume. So if we go to JP Morgan and take a look at JP Morgan, what you're going to see, JP Morgan right now, you're flat. You're $106. We had gone up on $13 million. They're back on 7.7. There's no, there's no sellers, uh, basically, in JP Morgan at this particular point. Uh, and they will be kicking off their numbers uh, Friday at uh, 0700. So that's going to be a big one to keep your eye on uh, to see if, in fact, they, get, they can get any traction. We go take a look at the oil service stocks. They, number one, ExxonMobil, couldn't hold price, didn't get up to its highs, you know, came into its downdraft. And we came into the downdraft on ExxonMobil with 8 million shares versus 29 million. This is a classic. This thing wants to go south and go south in a big way. Uh, we will get an expansion of volume out here today. And the Chevron, ExxonMobil, they have been basically saying out there for quite a while that oil wants to get smoked, that oil wants to get down. 
the smoking of oil out here today, you know, we'll find out without without this is all about. Um, and more than likely, you know, has to do with the tariffs. Um, the bottom line in the tariff law, folks, there's no winners. And uh, we, you know, we, we got a, a tax break. Well, guess what? Tariffs are taxes. There's going to be taxes on everything. If, if Trump puts another 200 million, a billion rather, on your Chinese goods, guess what? Everything you're buying is made in China, whether it's an American company or a Chinese company. Uh, anything you're getting from any of these large retail stores, just look at it. They're all from China. Bottom line, prices are going up. The, I've been talking about bureaucracies. When you get caught in a bureaucracy, it's a huge problem. The train left the station as soon as the last task went on. And how many times have you been in a fight and then you forget what the fight's even about when you're in a longer term fight? It happens a lot, folks, okay? There's a lot of destruction inside of those deals. Guess what? We're at the beginning of this destruction. Stay right here, folks. Come right back. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank. Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow down 204, NASDAQ off 37, S&P's down 19. Let's go over and take a look at the uh, IWM, the small caps. First, we'll take a look at the ETF. Uh, ETF out here, bottom line, you already have an expansion of volume. Now, the ETF, the way small caps trade, you're at 167.40. Uh, Your high that I was trying to test yesterday, uh, yesterday we got up to a price point of 169.87. The high I was trying to test was 170.20. That was left from June 20th. The first high had 19.2 million. Yesterday, you do 18.7. Guess what? You're going to get a confirmation out here today. You're doing 19. 
Now, what also happens inside the IWM is that that gets monster volume at the close also. So what I expect we're going to see inside that IWM, you're going to see that expansion of volume coming in. That basically is setting up that we're going to get some follow through coming into Thursday and Friday. If we do go look at the world markets, uh, last night, uh, Asia, right across uh, all the indices, they were down from 8 tenths to 1% to 1.7%. Uh, 8 tenths was uh, in the Nikkei, 1.7 to 1.9 was in China. Uh, Europe today, what do we have with Europe? Bottom line is that with Europe, you had uh, Europe down 1.3%. That was the FTSE in London uh, to 1.5%, the DAX in Germany. If we go over to the DAX and we just take a look at the DAX, and see where we're sitting out with the, the DAX. The DAX closed down 192 bucks, 12,417. And this has been an anemic um, counter trend bounce anyway. The, the DAX bottom line is topped out also in January. The top out in the DAX is 13,590. And right now we're at 12,417. So these, these, the, the highs that we've had out here too, this is what's really pretty wild. It's pretty subtle. Inside the S&P 500, as well as the Dow Industrials, both of those highs were in January. We're in July 11th right now. Bottom line, that's a little slicing and dicing along the way. We're in a time frame, folks, that is problematic in the case of someone waking up saying, "I'm going to buy to make money going forward." And this is why. What ends up happening in the markets is that the summer is slow anyway. So the real question is, is that when you, if you actually believe in a, a supply and demand equation, you need more buyers than sellers, you need more demand than supply in order for things to go up when everything is relative. That being said, what you have on top of that is that September is a problematic month inside the marketplace. You know, many times what ends up happening is that as you're, I, I have seen some big downdrafts start. In, in fact, the 98 downdraft started, I believe, uh, uh, July 14th. And it's not that this is similar to 98, but I'm always cognizant of July in general, because once something starts high happening any place in the world, it can get contagion and get contagion pretty quickly. Now, when you look at 98 versus where we are right now, 20 years later, the acceleration of money worldwide is so much more. I mean, the 98 deal with the um, uh, Asian contagion and that was uh, oh, long-term capital, that, was, that amount of money was tiny compared to the amount of money that's in the marketplaces now. So we'll see where this whole baby shakes out, but I expect what you're going to see is that um, each day the uh, volatility is going to pick up a bit inside this marketplace. Um, what we have priced out here today is pretty amazing because what's happening is that the VIX uh, is trading at $13.47, but that is not an expansion at all. It's $0.83, cents, but guess what? That is not an expansion. Uh, and so what the market is saying right here is that investors are not worried about this market going south. You can take that whatever way you want to take it. That's contrarian in a huge way. Um, but, you know, the, the reality also is, is that you're only you know, down 17 bucks inside the S&P. And you got to remember something. The VIX has everything to do with the S&P 500. That's, that's where it's correlated off, okay? It's correlated off the months going forward inside the S&P 500. And the S&P 500, you know, right now um, is down shot money. That being said, what you do have is that you, you have some losers out here and, you know, there's some, there's some heavy stocks that are going south. Let's go take a look at the, some of the high flyers out here. So let's start with Amazon and take a look at Amazon. Amazon right now, Amazon is trading up $10.78. You're going to love that, right? $10.78. That's going after its high of $17.62. Google. We take a look at Google. What do you have with Google? Google right now is up $5.70. Now, that had been as low as $11.41.
that gave that came back 17 points huge number Microsoft we take a look at Microsoft what do you have with Microsoft Microsoft is flat 102 we take a look at Netflix what do you have with Netflix Netflix right now up 288 $418.56. Now, when you look at that sector, there's a couple different things that fundamentally you can take a look at. Amazon, I can picture Amazon bottom line in one way getting hit for the tariffs, but in another way, picture what you have happening here. You have, you have the aspect that all retailers are going to have to go up because the next $200 billion in tariffs, if you take a look at the a pie chart, the electronics in, in that number is huge, folks. It's like 34%. It's all the stuff we buy, whether it's TVs, it's everything except phones. They didn't hit the phones yet. That being said, what that would probably do is that when you have a cement and mortar store, your problem is, of course, that you always got to keep paying rents. So Amazon is probably going to accelerate even more because of the fact that we're all going to be cognizant, and which we haven't seen in a long period of time, of prices uh, going up, okay, and going up basically pretty fast in the aspect because it's a tax. It's not just, it's just not like a, a, a piece of the supply chain that went up. Flat out, you get a 10% tax on it. Well, guess what? If something's a buck, it's a buck 10. If something's 100 bucks, it's $110. Bottom line, what is that going to mean? That's going to mean that Amazon, who's already the price king, is going to have a good scene going. Those other equities that I just brought up, you can see what's happening. There, it's intellectual property. The bottom line is that you're not making anything. They're making software. They're selling software. They're selling a service. Those are the companies that basically will make out on this deal in a huge way. Manufacturing, anything that has to do with uh, manufacturing is, is going to be a problem. Uh, what's intriguing out here, of course, is that what the market is saying right now is that it's not only just the manufacturing. Well, it's saying it is the manufacturing, and of course, it's saying it's the foodstuffs. Um, oil is one of the biggest hits, down 4.8 percent. But you can go right to the. You can go down hogs. Hogs are down 3 percent. Copper is down 3.2. Soybeans are down 2.6. Cotton's up 2 percent. Everyone's going to need less. Why? Because. It's price elasticity. And the price elasticity out here, we're going to be using less stuff. Bottom line is probably good because guess what? We have too much junk anyway. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. We have the Dow Industrials down 176. NASDAQ is off 31. S&P's down 17. Come right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. 
Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Uh, Let's go take a look at uh, Apple and see uh, where, we're, where we're standing out with Apple right now. So the, the market probably is looking at the amount of tariffs right now and say, okay, uh, they haven't hit the phone market yet, but guess what? Um, Apple may basically be on um, that move in the next uh, few months. Uh, the high in Apple is 194. You're at 187 right now. Um, yesterday, you went to a high with 15 million. You get 13.7 right now. Uh, bottom line is that uh, you get a slight expansion of volume out here. We'll see how Apple handles the 183.50 area. Why, that's where it broke out from. And, and this did have a breakout with volume. So bottom line is that when we went topside, breaking over those highs on May 4th, it had the strength to do it. That being said, you know, bottom line is that, uh, you know, that run there brought it from $160 up to not $194. So you had a $34 run. Um, you have a the June 25th, that's a high volume low. That's going to get tested. We'll see wherever that whole thing uh, wants to go. If we take a look at the uh, earnings, earnings are going to, be, going to be coming out on the 31st of July. So what we're going to see out here, folks, starting Friday, is that the banks are kicking off their numbers on Friday. The market right now looks to me like it's looking and say, okay, what do they want to do? Is Does the market want to basically look, look at the tariffs and say that, okay, it's going to be a problem? Companies are going to make less money? Are they looking at the earnings that are coming out? I would say that right now, the market is still waiting for those earnings to come out because, you know, if you're looking at my screen, yeah, it's, it's red. That being said, however, this is not um, a big percentage move down inside the marketplace. The ironic part about this is that when you look at the texture of the acceleration in the TAFs, you can remember that at the beginning of the story in the TAFs, uh, it was going to be one of these deals. Um, okay, are the TAFs going to go in place? And then the next story was, okay, it's only $34 billion. It's not going to be a big deal. And then the next story is, with, okay, there's going to be a wait in between the $34 billion to see where this shakes out. Well, guess what? There is no wait. The train left the station. As it's leaving the station, it's getting more acceleration. And my experience inside, the, inside watching bureaucracies in general is that once a train leaves a station inside a bureaucracy, it's huge problems. It's real easy to start something inside a bureaucracy. It's very hard to stop it. It's just a different ball game. You know, it's just like getting, you don't want to, when you get involved with a bureaucracy, you better be ready for the long haul because guess what? There's, there's changes in command continually. There's, not changes in policy that are that quick. On top of that, what ends up happening, and something as large as this, 
none of us, bottom line, that I suspect we're in the marketplace. I mean, unless you're about 100 and, let's see, 50, no, you, you can be good 87, 90 years old right now. Uh, the last time that we had this type of large TAFs, I believe the last time that uh, you had the big wars inside the TAF business was basically 1934. I'm going to check on it in the next break. But the bottom line is it's that it's that long ago. So we really don't know the amount of pieces that are out here, what companies are going to get hurt. What we do know from looking at the commodities is that we're going to hear some screaming from the farming communities in a heartbeat. There's, there's, if I can bring up every one of these graphs, I'll just start. So you got wheat right now down 20. And now, now check this out. This is what's pretty intense. So wheat three weeks ago was 570 a bushel. It's 470 right now. What we're going to see is this. The amount of commodities that have got sold this year that were planted, basically they're sold. This is going to be all about next year. But what does that mean? That What that means is that, in fact, let's, I want to go over to deer right now at Caterpillar. Because what that means, if we look at deer first, is that the amount of equipment gets sold more than likely is going to go down. Okay, so deer five months ago is 175. You're at 141. It's not the end of the world. Well... It's, not the, it's really not the end of the world. You know, the high was 175, 35 bucks down. It's not the end of the world. You know, we'll see how that handles it. Um, we take a look at Caterpillar. Caterpillar's at 137. Six months ago, it was at 170. That's getting hit. Oh, Patty. Oh, this is a problem. Okay. So, so we get, let's see, 26 million. Oh, this is a problem, child. Okay, so Caterpillar can be an ABC structure on the way down. And a big one, too. Let's look at this on a monthly. Okay, a monthly is down on volume, but it's, you get an ABC down. You get your A point at 173, your B's at uh, 138. So you're talking about 35 points. Your C's at uh, 161. Say so you got 125. 125. That's where it wants to go. You can get the gist of it though, because the bottom line is if the if the farmers are making less money, bottom line is going to be buying less goods. This is going to take a while to kick in, but uh, the amount of tariffs that basically are going to hit that community really have to do with next year. Well, the tariffs are on right now, but it's going to have to do. I suspect most of those farmers have already sold their goods, whether they sold them to the futures market, whether they sold them spot, whether they sold them to the uh, silos, you know, all of the above. So, you know, we'll see a lot more damage as we go forward versus what we have right now. If we go over, let's go into the uh, companies that are supposed to be helped tremendously, U.S. Steel. U.S. Steel is trading at $36 and 27 cents. Well, guess what? That's down from $47. This is how this whole deal started. The whole deal started in the steel and aluminum uh, market. Bottom line, U.S. Steel hasn't helped them a bit. It's, you straighten, it's trading where it was trading in 2016. Um, big numbers. Let me go take a look at a few of these other steel, steel stocks. Uh, let's take a look at so AKS Nucor. Let's pull up Nucor. N-U-E. New core is trading at sixty-four dollars and fifteen cents. This has been in a long consolidation. Yeah, this is not a bad looking stock actually. Yeah, new so new is in much better shape. New new has been at its highs and been staying at these highs for quite some time. Yeah, uh, you know the, now the high in new core going back to two thousand eight is at uh, eighty-two, but this is basically a de decent looking stock. Uh, AKS, AK Steel. This is trading at a price point of four dollars and sixty-one cents. Whoops. Yeah, this is a little problem, child. So this is off the highs of six fifty. No, this is a big problem, child. Huh. So this is off the highs of uh, eleven thirty-nine, actually. Yeah, this is a little problem, child. And it has a high volume low at four dollars and five cents. 
Dow Industrials right now down 195. Nasdaq off 38. S&P's down 19 and a half. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Don't forget. You can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. S&Ps are off 19 and a half. So the uh, smooth Hartley Taft law, folks, was put in the Taft Act of 1930. Uh, it was called, uh, commonly called the Smoot Hardly um, uh, Taft. Uh, bottom line is that what that did at that particular time, it put uh, tariffs on 20,000 inputted goods. Uh, bottom line is that uh, there's a huge amount of debate as did accelerate the Great Depression. Bottom line is that uh, the camp is still out on that. What's intriguing on this as you read through it, and I'm gonna go through this in the next hour, um, is the economic effects of it. Um, you know, because what we're gonna see here, because that was so long ago, we're gonna see a lot more people studying how those tariffs uh, came into place, uh, what was the result of those tariffs as they were put in place when you look at the factual numbers. And the factual numbers as I'm going through this are pretty intense actually, um, meaning the amount of uh, goods that stopped getting made inside the United States uh, when just the opposite was supposed to happen. And the reta retaliation uh, that also took place, meaning the boycotts, 
that took place, you know, against American products um, also increased. Um, so we'll we'll go through these levels, um, you know, uh, the peak. So picture this. This is when, when I talk about the the aspect of you start something when you when you finish it. So the peak of the tariffs started in 1930. The peak was in 1932, and bottom line, um, by 1933, uh, you had 59% of the products coming into the U.S. were taxed from 1930 to 1932. By 1933, 63% of the imports were not taxed. Because the bottom line is that you can imagine uh, you had the depression happening at the same time, people basically losing jobs left and right, and prices going up. Like, how does that work? Stay right there, folks. We come right back. We had the Dow finished down to eight at Nasdaq, down 40. SP's off 20. Come right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Oh, look who oh we have. it's a beautiful day. Look at our man, Jim from Minneapolis. We are taken by storm. Taking it by storm, baby. <laughs> I love that. That's a great saying, man. Hey, what's happening, brother? Good morning, gentlemen. How you guys doing today? Good man. Yourself? Oh, man. It's been the most incredible couple of days since when I called in on Friday, Litecoin busted out of that consolidation on the two-hour chart. Okay. And it just never looked back. It did a 100-point ABC up, and now it's very extended the way I look at it. Yeah. But holy, I mean, it went up to $420 last night. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about, whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not here. What are you doing right now? Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow Industrials trade down 219. You had the Nasdaq off 42. S&P's down 21. Percentage wise, out here, what you have, folks, is that you had the Dow Industrials trade down eight tenths of one percent. Nasdaq down five tenths. S&P's down six tenths. That's not a lot compared to when you take a look at this commodity market, folks. Inside the commodity market, we had crude oil down five percent. Yes, five, five zero. Um, gasoline down 4%. We got to love it. We're at light sweet. I mean, the uh, unleaded gas wholesale right now trading at 207. We went down nine pennies a gallon. Big number. Wheat was off 4%. You had lean hogs off three. Uh, corn was off two. Uh, you know, gold is down 13 bucks. Bottom line, it's only 1%, though. But get hit. No doubt. Got hit. That was down uh, 1%. We had silver down 1.69%. Big numbers right across the board out here. Notes and bonds continue to want higher price. Pretty amazing, actually. Um, well, it's not ama amazing in the context with this selling everything else. Uh, we go take a look at the 10-year uh, note first. What you're going to see in the 10-year note, 10-year note wants that May 30th 
swing high, the May 30th swing high out here is 121.03. We're at 120.08. You did 1.4 million contracts. Bottom line, it's hanging at these highs. We take a look at the 30 year. What you're going to see inside the 30 year, 30 year is right next to the swing high. That had actually gone over the swing high last week. Now, what we have with the 30 year, which is going to be really intriguing, is this. The swing high of the 30 year is 145.28. Well, we're right next to it. We're at 145.16. We did 248 million contracts. Bottom line is that we're going to be looking at 248,000 contracts, rather. And what we're going to be looking at out here tomorrow is to see can it get into 211. That's all we'd have to do. Because why? Because what we had done, we had already tested the swing high. We failed. We backed down with dramatically lighter volume. Now we're going into that high. And what you could have inside the bond market, which is going to be pretty wild, is that it very well may be uh, an ABC structure on the way up. If that's what we got, you're going to go into higher price, lower yield. The 10-year note right now is trading at a price point of 2.84. King Dollar. What did King Dollar do? King Dollar went topside. We trading up 666, 94.495. We take a look at King Dollar. What we have with King Dollar out here is this. King Dollar right now goes up with 24,000 contracts. You had price spread behind it. Volume-wise, not bad. It's expansion of volume, yet we're going into 28,000 contracts. The way this is trading, however, is that it does look like it's going to go right after the highs once again, which is the 95.225. The GDX, we get, little, we get big problems actually inside the GDX. The GDX has held up as the destruction had come down in the gold market since April. Bottom line today, what do you have? You're down 60 cents and you get an expansion of volume. Uh, coming into the close, they threw big numbers into the GDX as they expected they would. Uh, you get 14 million into the close to get the net asset value correct. Um, we didn't break it, break a swing low, but we certainly went into the strength with more volume. We did. We came down with 59 million shares. The strength had 27. Bottom line: now what you're dealing with is that you're dealing with the February swing high as well as the swing low. Uh, the swing high of that high volume low, where we had 101 million shares is $21.68. Right now, you're at 22. Uh, we had, we've tested this once. Uh, we had done the test on March 1st. March 1st, you did 59 million in the GDX versus the high volume low of 101. Bottom line, the way this is trading, looks to me like we're going to test the highs of those lows. One of the highs is $21.64. The other one is $21.68. So, Bottom line, it looks to me like you got another 38 cents down to test that. And we're coming into the weekend. We'll see how that baby shakes out. The uh, GLD, we go take a look at the GLD, which, of course, is the physical gold ETF. That is coming into its low, the last low there. Now, this has a contraction of volume. Uh, the GLD did 6.9 million shares versus 12 million. The low of that last low is 117.40. Right now, you're at 117.64. If we go into the SLV and we take a look at the silver contract, silver contract down 26 cents, the SLV rather, we're coming into that low also. That low had 9.4 million shares and we're doing 10 million shares. Price-wise, we missed it by a penny. My take is that we're going to go after it and I don't like the idea of how we're coming into it. Why? Because you're coming into it with an expansion of volume, uh, which is always dangerous in a huge way. Small caps. What do we have with the IWM? Inside the IWM, we're down $1.43. You did volume out here of 23 million shares. It's subtle. Bottom line, small caps came off the high with an expansion of volume. We, did a high, we made a high out here with 19.2 million. You're down with 23. That's saying that that also wants lower price. Some of the, um, oh, that's cool. Oh, we got to go to oil. Oh, my God. The oil contract, folks, this is pretty amazing, uh, watching how uh, oil uh, traded out. So oil out here, we had the API numbers come out this morning. The drawdown was 9.2 million barrels. Big, big drawdown, huge drawdown. Uh, at first, what you had, oil pops higher at 1030 in the morning. 
You know, before oil came out, we're trading at $73.50. It pops up to $74.04. That is at 10.30 when they come out. Stayed there for about a minute. Bottom line, starts working its way down into the 72.83 number. Stays there for about a half hour. It does a first leg down uh, into the noontime area. Gets down to 72.20, which was, you know, off the highs by $2. That being said, it just didn't stop then. You had a plunge down into $70.02. You've done 824,000 contracts. That's monster contract volume. You broke back inside the lower level, inside the oil contract. As soon as you got back inside 72.70, bottom line, that sets up now a 63.40 number. Big numbers all across the board. Dial finished down. Where is she? 219, NASDAQ off 42, S&P's off 22, come right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we had the Dow finish down 219. NASDAQ off 42. S&P's off 23. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Jim Prince at gbmembers.com. Jim, what's going on? Tom, how are you? Did you have a good 4th? I did have a good 4th. There's, there's nothing like the 4th of July, man. I, I think it's one of the best holidays we have. It seems that everyone's happy. We get the flags going everywhere. I love fireworks. I love eating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You know, it's, it's all good, man, right? Yeah. Hey, so, uh, well, first off, 
tell us tell us your website and tell us what you do over on your website. Yeah, so our web address is www.gbemembers.com, and that website is primarily based around our futures course, our futures data. We uh, provide a delayed charting system, and uh, I have a ton of videos, probably, uh, well, years worth of videos there, from training videos for our course um, to weekly newsletters are there as well, our manual. Basically, just everything that we teach, I've been teaching for the last uh, 12 or 13 years or so. Okay, cool, cool. And market-wise out here, what are you thinking? Wow, you know, there's definitely some big movers. You were talking about them just before the break, and uh, gosh, you know, one of the ones that really stood out to me, of course, was wheat, and you did mention that, but just a big mover to the downside. We actually got short that uh, on uh, July 5th uh, for our course members, and we took a little bit of heat there for a bit, but now we're looking pretty good with that trade. That market continues just to sell off. And just a big day again today. What do we have it down uh, over 4% on the session for the yes. September contract? Monster so, numbers. There's, there's no yeah, doubt about that, man. That, and, and you talked about crude oil as well. Another just huge day after that that little pop higher. And, and boy, what a what a move to the downside in crude. You know, it's it, what's intriguing is that it, it seemed that the crude... It came out of nowhere. I mean, you know, the drawdown was extraordinary. I mean, it, what happened, folks, is that they were looking. Well, what happened is that the the API numbers come out last night, and it was an expansion of the drawdown number compared to what they thought it was going to be. The EIA numbers this morning were huge, meaning the drawdown. And, you know, market pops first, and then it just was relentless on the way down. Yes, indeed. And then, you know, also on the Forex side of things, we're following the uh, U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar. And what a, what a move there. What a turnaround from the intraday news uh, put in that low. And what a substantial rally there in uh, in that Forex. Uh, obviously, a, another asset or, a, you know, thing that we tend to follow in Forex markets outside of just the commodity and futures. Of course, the S&P, a uh, yes. pretty good day to the downside as well there. Now, folks, you know, what, what happens, you can find out quite a bit about uh, Jim by coming over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see right under Nadex News. He writes over there. He does webinars over there. And when we bring up the, you know, the Canadian dollar, this is an aspect that, you know, if you haven't test-driven the Nadex product yet, you want to find risk and come over to our website, hit the banner, test drive it. And this is a classic, okay? And, and what I'm specifically saying, as Jim was just saying about the volatility inside this if you were actually in the forex market and you're just trading forex versus an option on it there's no way you could have stayed in it because we, we went from 100 well 1.3146 to one us dollar down to 1.3065 that doesn't seem like a lot but the forex market's huge and then you talk about an expansion huh jim oh my god yeah yeah this, just huge it I'm sorry, go ahead, Tom. No, 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 go ahead. It, you can tell them it was a rocket ship. I mean, it yeah, was like. <laughs> exactly, a rocket ship. And you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I was actually trading this this morning with Nadex, and it's such a fantastic platform and tool to use. And you're absolutely right about being able to, to uh, whether you can stay in it or not, Nadex is the great tool to do such a thing. And that is an explosive move here today for sure, rocket ship. It's, it's pretty amazing, man. And, of course, the, that w when the dollar goes up like this, folks, okay, that means when the Canadian dollar goes up, that means it's getting weaker against our own U.S. dollar. And there's no doubt, and, you know, we look at the dollar index a lot, but the dollar index, folks, you know, bottom line went up 600 ticks. But you got to remember the correlation, there's direct correlations between the dollar, Canadian dollar, dollar yen, dollar pound, all of the above. And that move there was just extraordinary. Pretty amazing, actually, man. Yes, for, so, for sure. You know, like, so what else do you think? Well, here, you know, the, it, it's so intriguing here, Jim, right? Is that, like, I think the market in general is looking saying, okay, how are the tariffs going to affect us? How are they going to affect commodities, number one? That, it looks like it's not going to be good for them. The currencies, folks, are always, it's the biggest market in the world. Bottom line, currencies can move markets. And... We got movement out here, man. You know, so it's going to be intriguing watching how this whole thing uh, trades out basically the next two or three months. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And, you know, along the same lines there, we have the, the big move in gold today as well. And oh. another market, boy, you know, when the dollar 
is doing its thing. Gold is, <laughs> you know, starting to kind of make its move further lower here today. Just a, a another it, good follow through down. Oh, it got smoked. You know, bottom line is that when you see, you know, gold on April 14th, April 11th for 13.75, you're at 12.42. Bottom line, the last week it was at 12.38. We'll see whether that can hang. And the thing that's pretty amazing, actually, when you're actually looking at the gold market, it's not that the dollar, well, went up a half a penny, but the bottom line is that it hadn't broken its highs yet. And, you know, gold seems to be uh, basically a lot weaker than the rest of the market. You know, it, 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 what's intriguing is that it's not weaker than the commodities. Some of these commodities, like, you know, oil's down 5%, wheat's down 4%. But in the context of uh, getting slammed, we'll, you know, we'll see how we come into this weekend. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, th I think what's really interesting on, the, on my gold charts is I have support down here just below where the market is at the moment, down to about uh, 1238.30 or so. So I, I'm going to be very interested to see how the market will react if it does try to push lower here tomorrow and, you know, see what kind of, uh, of uh, resistance or, in this case, support is, is going to uh, hold up there, whether it's going to hold up the market or not. No, listen, man, the, la the, la <laughs> the last time that we hit this, folks, okay, uh, gold decided not to jump off the cliff. <laughs> and and this, cliff, <laughs> this cliff is hanging here, right? I mean, you know, yeah. the bottom line, the cliff's kind of hung up here at about the uh, 1238, which is only four bucks inside the gold market. So, you know, we'll see where that, that baby does shake out. Uh, so let me change gears with you for a second. What are you thinking on the S&P? I mean, I know we're down 22 bucks. And... It's kind of interesting, percentage-wise, that's not down a lot as to, you know, how these commodities are down. We got, what, we got earnings, banks coming out uh, Friday. It almost seems like the market's not sure what it wants to do there. Yeah, I, I agree. Gosh, we had that uh, pretty substantial move up here. I made a, a video for Nadex on Sunday night, uh, and you, I think it was the last time I was on, you asked me about the ellipse, and I on that video, I showed yes. an ellipse, an area I thought the market was going to move into. And it talked about that on the Sunday night video. And boy, the market came right to a T. Now we're not always that exact, but it came right in, filled that resistance and hit the resistance area I pointed out, which is right around the, the 12, excuse me, the 2790-ish level. And it exceeded that a bit. And now we're moving back down as you, you know, as you were talking about, not really sure what it wants to do. I think if we get some follow through here to the downside, uh, the next couple of days, we're gonna come down and test that, uh, 2754 level is very possible whether it's this week or not you know that remains to be seen but i, I have some support there and just a little bit lower that now I think folks you, very easy you, to be if folks you can come right over to that website at tfnn you hit nadex news if you happen to watch on tiger tv you're going to see the video that i have uh that jim just talked about right up on the front page nadex weekly market lo outlook for the e-minis Jim, it's always a pleasure. Have a great week, safe week. Look forward to speaking in next week. Hey, thanks, Tom. Take care. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the X 
XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Faker Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We had the uh, Dow finish down 219, Nasdaq off 42, S&P's down 22 and a half. Let's go take a look at the volume inside the NYSE. So in the, uh, inside the NYSE, folks, you had seven 719 million. Now, that's shot volume on the way down. Uh, let's go take a look at the SPY. The SPY did... 76 million. Okay, so that's an expansion of volume. So, bottom line, you get some divergence out here. Uh, when you we take a look at the spy, that's bottom line. That's saying we made a high yesterday. 51 million to come down at 76. You were testing 79. Bottom line, that's saying you want lower price. That being said, we take a look at the Dow Industrials. When you get a contraction like this in volume, we take a look at it on the way down. You know the in order to basically get to lower price, this Dow is going to have to get an expansion of volume. Now, the differential is that the spot, the Dow Industrials is and has been the weakest indice. You know, the Dow topped out thus far January 26th. We're in, we're in July 11th. We topped out, uh, bottom line, about 1,000 points higher. Well, not that that's a lot, but bottom line, that's how that is set up. Uh, if we do uh, go into the uh, Russell 2000, the actual indice, we take a look at the indice. What we have with the indice out here... Let's see how this shakes out. In fact, I'm not sure whether I get the volumes right off the bat. No, I don't get the volumes on this one right off the bat. So let's do the IWM. So if we go to the IWM and we take a look at the IWM, IWM also had an expansion of volume, 23 million shares after basically going higher yesterday with 18. Uh, the XLE, which was, you know, basically telling us for quite some time that there's something wrong inside the large oil integrated equities. Why? Because, you know, in the last year and a half, we just went from $42 to $75, yet the XLE couldn't get any traction. Sure enough, what does it do today? It's down 19 million shares. That's a monster expansion with volume, huge. Uh, bottom line is that uh, you got a high volume low that's laying out here at 73, you're at 75, 75, and you can expect we're going to go there. We go take a look at Exxon Mobil, same setup. That was an expansion of volume, 10 million shares. Chevron, well, big number on Chevron, 6.3 million shares. Uh, that is that has a high volume laying out here at just 120 right now. You're down four bucks on Chevron. These things want lower price. That's the bottom line. Now, let's go take a look at the financials, because what we are going to have is this. J.P. Morgan is going to kick off the bank earnings. Those bank earnings are going to kick off Friday morning at 0645. So, J.P. Morgan out here, that had a nice sign of strength Monday. That's where, you know, this has been a monster consolidation inside the financials in general. You know, J.P. Morgan five months ago had a high of $119. We had a low 
last Friday of 102. So bottom line, down 17 bucks. You know, that's, you know, bottom line, 14% off its high, right? Not the end of the world, but 20% would be considered a bear market. Now, you pop up, you, you pop up with some good volume. Yesterday, you give it up on price. How we trade tomorrow is going to be a big number in J.P. Morgan. There's no doubt, man, uh, because what we haven't done is that you haven't got any traction higher with conviction in J.P. Morgan, which happened to be one of the strongest financial equities out there. Let's go to uh, go, it's, uh, Bank of America. Take a look at Bank of America. Bank of America, same type of setup. Bank of America hasn't been able to get uh, above its February 9th high volume swing low. Uh, that has to get back inside that range. That's $29.15. Citigroup, let's go take a look at Citi, because these were the three that uh, really did have a sweet day on. There we go, one second. Oops. On Monday. Um, City, well, who City Group's in, in tough shape, even though it did have a, a, a good day. City, yeah, City Group, your, your high volume low that has to get back inside the City Group is $71. And right now it's 67. City Group in six months has gone from 80. Uh, we hit a low two weeks ago of a 64. So, well, that's intriguing. So, look at that. Well, let me bring this up. So, City Group. Yeah, bottom line is that you, when you take a look at this, Citigroup actually went down 20%. February 2014, you're trading out at a price point of uh, $80.70. We, two weeks ago, we were at $63. That is one big number, huge number. So we'll see where uh, that is going to shake out. And that is going to put some high volatility inside the market, of course, for the next couple of days. What has happened, what looks like it's happened out here today is this is that your, your aspect of the tariffs, where the market is going, versus the numbers coming out on Friday. The market really hasn't made its mind up yet as to where it wants to go. Specifically, where it wants to go is that, uh, does it want higher price and these earnings are going to come in? Or the amount of taxes that are going to be done, because a tax a tariff is a tax. That's the bottom line, folks, okay? The government gets all the money, but guess what? Goods are taxed. We're going to pay the tax. That's, that's the bottom line. That's how it works. So the aspect is going to be, are we going to buy the goods, pay the tax, pay the inflation rate, do the whole ball of wax? Well, the last time this came into being, uh, which is the Taft, uh, smooth, smooth, Taft, smooth, Hartley tax uh, was in 1930, and it peaked out in 19. I mean, in uh, yeah, 1930. It peaked out in 1932, uh, meaning the amount of goods that basically got reduced coming into the country, as well as going out of the country. In 1933, it started reversing the other way. Bottom line, it took years. It, took, it actually took until World War II to get back to production, because what you had, what you had in there in his arguments uh, was his theories about uh, did it accelerate the depression? Most, it seems like I was reading, you know, most of the things you read is that it wasn't a cause of the depression. That's, we're gonna, we're, there's gonna be a lot of huge theories out here. Um, and I suspect what we're gonna have is that you're gonna have the aspect of uh, the fundamentals as to how is this gonna affect each country, the last time that this happened, we had uh, basically put a taft on 20,000 uh, different goods. And on the next segment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over that, because when you see these numbers, um, it, was, it was quite extensive. What it, what it ended up happening is this, is that other countries, at, at the very beginning, first, first four or five weeks, they thought things were going to be fine. What ended up happening is that the amount of goods that we imported went down dramatically, and I'm talking about big numbers, and I'll get you those exact numbers in the next uh, segment. That's the first part. The second part, which got more detrimental, was the amount of exports that we did, I believe, almost got cut in half. They were down, I believe, at least 40%. They were down 40% within a year. The unemployment rate 
went up exponentially because of the fact that all of a sudden, one second you have a market, next second you don't have a market, bottom line, never came back to World War II. Why? Because guess what? Everyone's fighting and you need lots of stuff to destroy. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. So let's go over, you know, the last time we had any tariffs, folks, okay, uh, 1930, okay? And if you go to Wikipedia, I'm, gonna, I'm bringing this right off Wikipedia, folks, okay? So I suspect, um, you know, anyone who's in this market, you're going to want to understand uh, or try to understand how the moving pieces work and what may happen here. Uh, so this Taft Act got implemented in 1930. You had uh, two... Uh, senators, uh, well, no, a senator and a representative uh, it was signed into law on June 17th. Now, at this particular point, that this was the second highest uh, in the U.S. Uh, in the 100 prior years. Uh, the act and the following retaliatory tariffs by the American trading pat, uh, partners were major factors in the exports as well as the imports uh, by more than half during the Depression. You know, we'll keep the depression aside for a second because there's, you know, pros and cons, whether it caused the depression. But let's just say it, it didn't at this point. It seems like most of the time you look at it and saying it didn't. But that being said, when you start, look, just look at the pure numbers, it's pretty intense. Um, 
and then it has in the although economists disagree by how much the consensus view among economists and economic historians is that the passage of this smooth Hartley Taft Act uh, accelerated the Great Depression. That's 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 it. That started accelerated it. Okay, so when we take a look at this, what you're going to see is this: the it started. Uh, you had the Depression in 1929. That was the first part of it. Okay. Uh, bottom line, uh, the goal of this was to protect American jobs and farmers from foreign competition. That's so that was the goal. Um, the Reed Smooth, he championed uh, another tariff increase within the United States in 1929. That actually became the bill. Um, okay, so let's bring this down further. So here's the economic effects that took place. Let's see what we can get this. I want to get these numbers. Okay. Okay, so the TAF levels. The it started in 1930. The amount of goods uh, represented as they as is accelerated. So when we started the TAFs here, you started with 39 billion in China. I'm not sure how much was already done with the the, the steel and the aluminum in Canada and all our trading partners. Bottom line, it's billions of dollars. This is now accelerating to 200 billion. Uh, this had started in uh, the 1930, and it was on 20,000 um, different products that were coming into the United States. Well, when you when you look at it, uh, one of the TAFs inside of that put a 60 percent TAF on 3,200 products and materials imported into the United States. That quadrupled the rate. Um, it averaged the the average rate acceleration was 19.2. So let's say at this particular point, bottom line is that we would we're doing a 10% TAF, right? On consumer goods right now. We're doing a 25% TAF on steel, on aluminum, bottom line, on the I believe it's a 20% TAF on our goods going over to China. So listen to this number. This number is pretty amazing. Unemployment in 1930, when this act was passed, was 8%. In 1931, that unemployment rate jumped from 8% to 16%. One year, it doubled. The following year, it added on another 9%. So it was 25% in 1932. By that particular point in 1932, bottom line, of course, I'm sure the citizens are screaming. You wouldn't be screaming. We'd all be screaming. We'd be going out of our mind. Bottom line, that was the peak of the Taft. So that started backing down. What you have, and this is the sad part of it, is that it took from the 1932 point all the way up to World War II. World War II started in 1942. Bottom line, it's over in 19... Well, the acceleration started in 1942. Bottom line, it was over in 1947. That is... It took that long to, for basically, um, you know, un, for employment to come back. Uh, so we're talking big numbers here, man. You know, this is... Uh, and as I've said many times, when you're talking about a bureaucracy uh, that gets in the way, guess what, folks? All the people that, pay, that look, work for the government... They get paid, don't they? This is uh, a huge problem, and the you know if we if we want to go back to World War One, this is where this gets really wild, and this doesn't have to do with taps. What this has to do with is that right now my take on the economy, everything's going great, right? It seems that hey, listen, we went through the depression, two thousand seven, you crash, you you know the banks basically got away with murder, they write everything down, they, they wreck the economy, nothing happens to the banks, you get uh, basically a bill in to try to straighten the banks out, what ends up happening? The banks get out of that bill, it's wide opened again, okay? And then what, what ends up happening? 
what ends up happening is as things are going great, you throw a piece of dynamite, a piece of dynamite in the deal, the economy is going great, are tariffs. What happened in World War I is that everything was seemed to be fine across the world. Guess what? Things changed real quick. And when they changed, that train had taken off. And you know, if you ever watch the History Channel, um, that was the most vicious war we've been in. And the amount of folks that died was extraordinary. And that had to do with the aspect that the bottom line is that someone wanted power. And guess what? It just took everyone to the cleaners. When you get, if you know anything, when you get in a fight, folks, a real fight, there's never any winners. When you get in a bureaucratic fight, the bureaucracy can't handle it. And what I mean by can't handle it is this. Once the rules go in place, once the train has started, it is so hard to stop that train because the, there's winners and there's losers. At the very beginning of this deal, whoever the winners are in this particular case, it's some of the steel companies, it's some of the aluminum companies, they think they're going to be winners, right? The losers are going to be all the workers. You think the workers are going to get a shot? No way. Bottom line, money is going to be the deal. End of the story, guess what? We're all losers. That's how this comes out. So we're going to see how this thing shakes out in the next four or five months. I think the market is going to tell us quite a bit. Right now, the market hasn't told us, my take, the market hasn't told us anything. The commodity market has. The commodity market, I suspect the first part that we're going to see protests out there are going to be in farm country. Farm country is going to get hit. That's, that's, that's what, how this uh, seems to be shaking out. We'll see. Um, it's going to be intriguing the way, go, the way uh, oil got hit today is that if the energy patch gets hit. The energy patch gets hit, let me tell you, we'll have a shot that this thing will be stopped, okay? Because the energy companies, folks, rule big time. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today.
With over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet, while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. And, uh, you know, as we're talking about these tariffs, we'll see uh, just maybe the uh, Congress or the Senate will uh, end up uh, basically putting a trap uh, on the president here. We'll see how this shakes. What they, they didn't do anything today, but the bottom line is that they, uh, they took a, a vote, which means nothing because it's a non-binding vote, but that vote was uh, 88 to 11. Uh, that just came across the tape. Uh, and what that vote was about uh, was that, uh, let's see, it was sponsored by Bob Corker, but yet, you know, Corker is the one that's a uh, Tennessee Republican. He's retiring. Uh, and what, that, what it's all about uh, is the, uh, this is not about being, this is not being imposed for national security reasons. Bottom line is that what Trump and the administration is saying right now is that it's national security reasons. Uh, so, bottom line is that we'll see where this shakes out. Uh, you know, bottom line, the Senate, the uh, House of Representatives, uh, we'll see if they're going to try to slow it down. What's going to be really intriguing is that um, thus far, you know, nothing has slowed this thing down. And as I said a little, a little bit earlier, uh, the bottom line is that once the train leaves the station, folks, it's really hard to slow it down. It's going to be particularly, well, the... When you look at the aspect that everyone talks about, the elections that they think is going to be hard to slow it down, I don't buy that argument. The reason I don't buy that argument is that if I've learned out anything, folks, okay, is that jobs are the name of the game. And him claiming that this is about jobs, well, guess what? It's not about your job or my job, okay? Those things can be gone in a second. <laughs> this is... Uh, some kind of a fight that it's either about something we don't see with huge amounts of bread and like, yeah, maybe 100 people will make money and 3 million people are going to lose money. You know, as a society in general, I suspect that the amount of damage that can be done um, is going to be big. And the real question is, um, those senators, guess what? They're going to have to basically go home and say, hey, what happened here, man? Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about, whatever you focus on grows, and whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like an HP motion picture. Step into it, take ownership, fly with it. Thanks for being here, folks. Have a great night, safe night. Look forward to speaking right back here tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. Look at them, folks. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.